One honor it is to be here today. In this room are the most creative brain cells in Hong Kong. But that's enough about me. Uh, it's great to see such a great turnout. And lots of ladies, too. Can I just do a quick survey? Hands up if you are female. Hands up if you are male. Okay, not sure? Okay, 5% not sure, I reckon. Um, hands up if you were born in Asia. Hands up if you were born outside Asia. Hands up, not sure. Okay, slightly, uh, slightly more born in Asia, which uh, I'm going to talk a bit about Asia. Now, I was born in Asia a long time ago, and um, I was taught English from a book as, uh, and a teacher, and um, the book said that all English speakers begin by uh, conversations by saying, how do you do? <laughs> and um, I learned this from my teacher, and I tried it. I was a little Sri Lankan kid with a Sri Lankan accent. How you do? <laughs> and um, my teachers were very patient, you know. How do you do? Two do's and no head wobble. So I tried it like a Westerner, no head wobble. How you do do? <laughs> Eventually, I managed to make it all the way to London. And I tried it. How do you do? And of course, the Londoners said, How do I do what? <laughs> no one ever used that phrase. Well, hands up, you've been to London. You know what they, how they greet people in London? Watch your mate, watch your puke face, if they really liked you. And, you know, um, I asked my school friends there, I said, what does it mean, this watcha? Nobody knew. They all said it 20 times a day, but nobody knew what it meant. Uh, I, I later went to see my brother, who lived in New York, and I tried it there. How do you do? But you know how New Yorkers greet each other, don't you? Yo! I asked his friends, what does yo actually mean? Nobody knew. They all used it all the time, but nobody knew what it meant. I came to Hong Kong, and I'm reading my language book, and it says, all Hong Kong people begin every conversation like this. Lei ho ma. And then you cry, ho ho lei la. But they don't. They say, "Hey, hey, ma." I said to my Hong Kong friend, "What does it mean, hey, hey, ma?" That was weird. I asked them what it meant, and they said it means yo. Full circle. So. I became interested in language, and I decided, being a novelist, I'd write a book with all the characters speaking different brands of English. So there was an Asian character and a Western character, and the Asian character spoke the sort of English that I learned in school, um, and the Western character spoke uh, the, West, the real English that Westerners spoke. So of course they don't understand each other, and eventually the, the Asian realizes that the word for yes is not yes. The word for yes is whatever. <laughs> he realizes there are three words for no, uh, and they are as if, in your dreams, and yeah, right. <laughs> Last one is particularly confusing, because to an Asian, yeah, right means yes, right. But to a Westerner, yes, yeah, right means no, wrong. <laughs> The book was set in Singapore, and I said, how do Singaporeans speak English? And everyone said, oh, they add luck to the end of every sentence. I thought, hmm, I better check. I don't trust anything about language anymore. Flew to Singapore. They add luck to the end of a few sentences. They add other things. They add is it to everything. Have you noticed this? I didn't know, is it? But they spoke in this very strange way, very short sentences, two, three words, English words, but the syntax and grammar were completely uh, new to me. Um, so, is it possible becomes, can I not? Um, 
so what should we do now? I become so oh, how? <laughs> May I use the restroom? Toilet, toilet. <laughs> um, how do you... Uh, that's a lot of bullshit. Becomes, uh... uh where God? Uh, I realised that this was a very unique form of English. I realised what it was, in fact, was a new language. It was English vocab, Western vocab, and Eastern syntax. I found the same language in Malaysia, and they said it was Malglish and Singlish, but in fact it was almost identical. I began looking for this language everywhere. I, uh, this language which was English in words, in vocab, and Chinese or Eastern in syntax. I came to Hong Kong, and what did my taxi driver say? Oh, okay, ah. <laughs> Perfect example. English word, but turned into Chinese. Perfect Chinese. I went to Shanghai. I went to Beijing. It was everywhere. You go into any shop in China, and you look like a foreigner, and they say, oh, very nice. You know, uh, if you don't like it, they say, this one, same, same. <laughs> All these Chinese phrases, Chinese syntax into English languages, into, uh, on English vocab. I realized that I might be onto something here. So I did some actual serious research, which is, which is rare for me, and uh, started counting numbers. Um, I consulted a lot of professors of English, and they said that a language belongs to its speakers. So English used to belong to a tiny tribe in the Midlands of England called the Mercians. Then it spread to the whole of the British Isles, and it belonged to them. Then America outgrew England, and the English language belonged to America. But in the last few years, the biggest speaking group of, English, of the English language are Asians. Asian English is now the biggest brand of English in the world. <laughs> uh, how big is Asia? Do you know what percentage of the world is Asia? 61.5%. 4 billion out of 7 billion people on this planet. Okay, so we now own Asia, we now own English, <laughs> and this is how we chose to, to speak it. I wrote a serious academic article about this because, you know, with these sort of theories, you can have an idea, but unless it gets accepted by the academics, um, it goes nowhere. So um, I sent it to World Englishes, which is the top uh, academic journal for, for this kind of linguistics. And they accepted it immediately and published it. So I thought, okay, this is real. There is a new language, which is uh, English words and Chinese syntax. And it's spreading uh, around the world. I went to India to see if that part of Asia spoke the same sort of thing. And uh, anybody here been to India? That's an interesting brand of English there, because the, most of the people I met, you know, in the sort of newspaper business and publishing business, spoke Edwardian English. Um, I remember a police chief saying to me, the miscreants hailed from Calcutta. <laughs> I thought, wow, he's talking Sherlock Holmes language. <laughs> In the year 2012, he's talking Sherlock Holmes language. Um, but as soon as I, I left the sort of professional classes and went out in the streets, what did I find when I went into the shops? You like, very nice, same, same price. I found the same language. Um, this very simplified grammar that comes from Asian roots, but all the words are from English. I went looking for places where the cultures really, really mixed. So uh, nightclubs, girly bars, yeah, my life, life's, life's tough. Um, and uh, it was very interesting because, of course, um, this language, which I, I call globalese, uh, is the only language spoken in nightclubs uh, and uh, everywhere uh, in, in all the different countries. So uh, for those of you uh, who've never been to a nightclub, this is what happens. Um, you go in and a, a woman with too much makeup approaches. <laughs> And she usually starts with, it's my birthday, you buy me drink. <laughs> and then um, I reply, it was your birthday last month as well. <laughs> because everything that is said in a nightclub is basically uh, a lie. 
So then she goes on to her next line, which is, uh, is uh, usually, you're very handsome. <laughs> and then she looks at my trousers and she says, oh, you're plenty big boy. <laughs> uh, she, another line, which we, we, we always hear is, um, is uh, you may have good time tonight. <laughs> Basically, all these phrases are lies. So, sad to say. Um, but they are all in this one language that we all communicate in. Now, this discovery solved a mystery that I've long had, which is, um, in books of linguistics, they say English is one of the most complex languages in the world. It has more irregular verbs than uh, any other language except French, I believe. Uh, they say that English is very hard to speak, but it's not true. I've been in villages in Vietnam. I've been in uh, odd corners of Indonesia, Irian Jaya, um, uh, Cambodia where even the kids can speak simple English. And what are they doing? They're speaking English words with Asian uh, syntax. So the next world language is not going to be English. It's not going to be Chinese. It's going to be globalese. It's going to be basically the sort of thing you'll hear uh, in, in Singapore. Uh, now, um, the, the smoking gun on an academic uh, point of view is you've got to find some historical context. I needed to find a phrase that was pure English in terms of vocab and pure Chinese in terms of syntax that had started here and spread around the world. So of course I started doing some uh, serious research and I found it. 150 years ago when the British started hanging around this island, the Chinese compradors would spot them and would say, Ho loi mo gi. <laughs> Long time, no see. <laughs> and that phrase is clearly globalese and it's spread. And you can now find that phrase in every English speaking community. But you and I know that is Cantonese. It's not English, it's Cantonese. Uh, in terms of syntax, it's Cantonese in terms of uh, vocab, it's English. So globalese has been slowly growing from one or two phrases like that 150 years ago to this uh, to Asian uh, English. Um, I, I'm going to finish just uh, with, some, with some pictures because, um, because I know you like visual aids of just how confusing uh, this mixture can be. Uh, let me just see if this works. Uh, okay, Google in Asia is a type of toilet paper. <laughs> what is Facebook? Facebook in Asia is a brand of clothes. Uh, no uh, link to, uh, to any, any, uh, anything technological. Uh, Nokia is still Nokia, but the, uh, the slogan's changed a bit. <laughs> I'm not sure what Hanokin Kuki means, but it's very memorable. Okay. Um, we're not scared of dogs so much in Asia, but we hate ghosts. Asian signs are generally very blunt. And I actually like the directness of, uh, of Asian signs. And this is very common in India. In India, Indian guys are skinny and we do wear dress type things. So this actually makes uh, a lot of sense. And this is all over India too. Can anybody tell me what they sell here? Oh, beer. Chilled beer. Okay. <laughs> um, this sort of thing... <laughs> now this is what I mean by syntax. Now, those of you who are bilingual will see that the Chinese and the English use the same words, but can you see the different syntax has given them actual uh, opposite uh, meanings. Now here's an actual dialogue in, uh, uh, in Globalese. So I actually recorded this uh, on a street in Malaysia, in a cafe, and um, the interesting thing about this is that neither of the speakers were, was English or Chinese speakers. They were, it was a Bangladeshi uh, communicating uh, with, 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 uh, with uh, someone, a Malay person. But you can see that the, uh, the, um, 
the phraseology is Chinese. Um, hello, how are you? Long time no see. Beer you want? Coca Cola? Don't want. Coffee ab. You know, um, this sort of thing, like uh, repeated words. Are on, uh, uh, you know, Asians don't use plurals. French fry. You know, we talk about my dad always talk about putting on his underpants. And I say, underpants. He said, no, only one, underpants. <laughs> um, yeah. My, my mother still talks about going to Starbucks. You know? When you go to one, you're not going to two, are you? Um, do you remember the sign there used to be at uh, Sogo? Um, uh, uh, um, uh, what did it say? Um, beware of the store pickpocket. As if the store employed its own, its own pickpocket. You know? uh, but here we see uh, uh, examples. Now, if we actually do some translation, uh, here is uh, an original piece of uh, English. And here, which you'll probably see in Singapore, is a bit of globalese. <laughs> to be, can or not, eh? A question I ask you. Is it more good to be hit by plenty big trouble? Or to fight back and finish off quick, quick? <laughs> I bet I sleep enough already. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. You know, uh, so, some of you know I write, uh, I write columns in newspapers and uh, I have a secret weapon. I've been doing this for 25 years and I get letters and signs and uh, uh, samples of, of uh, strange English have been sent in to me from, uh, from all over Asia uh, for many years, so it enables me to, to, to gather uh, all this material. But, um, you know, this is a research project that is ongoing, so please, I'm sure all of you, probably every person in this room, has an example of this blending of East and West uh, in linguistic terms that uh, you can send to me, okay? So send to me, mrjam.org. You can remember that, can't you? mrjam.org. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>